This is Malcolm341. In today's video, we're going to look at some Maya tricks and secrets. So today we're going to look at planarized components with the scale tool, multi-cut snap diverts while you cut, and how to extrude and clone with the built-in hotkey. So let's get into it. Okay, so first up, we've got the planarized components. And so you used to need to have like a special script for this or a plugin or whatever, but now you can just do it right in the default Maya and it's actually really easy. So the first thing that you wanna do is you want to switch over to the scale tool and then just double click the icon over here to open up the options for the scale tool. And you wanna turn on prevent negative scale. And what this does is when it's off and you go to scale something, It'll allow you to scale through it to the other side. Whoops, go to wireframe there so you can see what's happening. It'll allow you to scale positively like this and go negative. And when you go negative, you can go right through and it'll actually like invert itself or whatever. So we don't want that. What we want to do is turn on prevent negative scale. I almost always turn this on. It is turned off by default in Maya. So once that's turned on, when you go to scale something, it's going to stop when it gets to that point, similar to how 3ds Studio Max works. So can't scale through it. It just stops and it actually planarizes whatever you have selected at the same time. So perfect planarize. Now, what's really cool is you can use that in conjunction with a custom pivot point to actually planarize however you want. So if I wanted to planarize, let's say this stuff, grab it and just scale and boom, it's planarized. That's easy because it's on a right angle. But let's say I wanted to planarize everything to like, let's say this face, like along this angle here. So I'm going to grab those components. So I want to planarize like those components to this face. And then I'm going to press D on the keyboard and that's going to enter this pivot mode or whatever. And then I'm going to select the face to align to. And that's going to align temporarily the component pivot to that face. Now watch this. I'll switch into the scale tool by pressing R. And then when I scale along that face, Boom, planarized to that exact angle. So now you can planarize any component you want to any angle you want. So if I wanted to planarize to this guy, no problem. Press D, grab that, switch back to the scale tool, scale negative, boom, planarized, just that easy. Here's another example that will make it a little bit more clear. So I've got this wonky shape. It's completely arbitrarily rotated, whatever. I'm going to go modify freeze transforms. It's totally busted. And I want to planarize, let's say, actually, I'm going to just put a cut in here. Whoops, I'm just going to connect these two faces. There we go. Actually, that's not that obvious here. Let's make it even worse. I'm just going to move it up like that. So you can see this is like a completely arbitrarily weird, janky shape. And I want to planarize these faces or whatever, these verts, let's say. So I could grab these two guys here, and then I pick the axes that I want to planarize to. So if I want to planarize to this guy, press D, align to that, switch to the scale tool, and then watch this. Boom. Planarized perfectly to that face. But maybe I want to, don't want to do that. Maybe I want to actually planarize along like this axis instead. So we could select this one here, same thing, scale, and go boom, planarize down to there. And whatever I have selected is going to be perfectly planed to that edge that I selected in the custom pivot or face that I selected in the custom pivot. This can be super handy. Let's say if you've, uh, I don't know, extruded something here. I'm just going to extrude this face. Whoops. To switch out of the custom pivot mode, you might see like here, I've just extruded the face, but my pivot's over here. Press D and then click in the empty space in Maya and it'll reset. There we go, back to normal. So I'm just gonna grab that pivot. I'm just gonna middle most drag that out. So it's like whatever, some arbitrary shape here. And same thing, like I've extruded that face out and it's like, oh, that's not planar. There's like a little bit of weirdness going on there. So even if this was even more weird like that and I wanted to planarize that face, then I could just grab that face, press D, and then use, you can use an edge, you can use whatever, right? So you can use an edge here, so it's gonna go along this nice angle. And then if you hold down D and V on the keyboard, you can minimize drag and snap the pivot wherever you want. And so planarizing from that point. So I wanna planarize to right there. Enter the scale tool, boom, planarized. So the really cool thing is that if you've got, let's say, a bunch of these verts selected like this, if you scale this, it's going to go to the center. So it's going to scale average to the center like this. But if you wanted to planarize to the top, all you have to do is first move the pivot. So hold down D and V, 
and middle mouse drag to like this vert up here to the top, let's say. Enter the scale tool and see now it'll planarize to that point instead of if you just had it all selected in the center. Just gonna reset this uh, pivot there. Then we could go down to the center or even better, let's move the pivot here and scale from there. We can go down to the bottom. So kind of infinite options, super easy to do and just built right into Maya just by turning on the prevent negative scale. Amazing. One more because this is just such a janky shape and this is just so easy to do now. So select the faces, press D to enter the custom align tool. I'm going to align to this edge here. And then I'm going to go D plus V holding those down plus holding middle mouse down. Drag that up there, scale. Boom. Look at this. Perfectly planarized, the most janky shape, two triangles. Perfect. Okay, next up, we've got the multi-cut tool, snap to verts while you cut. So I have often needed to make stairs and I would like them to be seamless with the geometry beside them. I'd like to actually cut that in to the edge there. And you can use a Boolean, that's one way to do it, but that often creates a bunch of junk geometry and then you have to clean it up. And sometimes it is actually easier and faster to actually just cut the shape out. Maybe you've already UV mapped this, maybe the Boolean corrupts your geometry, whatever. So first, I'm just going to make sure that I've snapped these two objects together so there's no gap between the two. And then I can use the secret trick of selecting this object here. And then we're going to go and enter the multi-cut tool. I'm going to hold down shift and hold down right click and then go enter the multi-cut tool. And once you're in this tool, if you hold the V key down before you cut, watch this. See, it snaps to the point. Check this out. Snap, snap snap. I don't know if this feature is documented actually. Snap, 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 snap. Right click to confirm. Boom. Go into here, select that face, delete. Cool. We've got a perfect cut, right? Wrong. There's actually a little bug with this tool. It is a super helpful tool, but if we zoom in close, you can see it has actually left a gap. So it snaps to it and it's awesome, but it doesn't actually perfectly line up. It's like there's a precision error or something. So it still might be faster if you want to go in and grab each point and go snap, snap, snap snap, whatever, so on and so forth until they're all lined up. I've certainly done that on many models and uh, that works fine, but I actually have a custom tool that'll do this all in one click. So I'm gonna use that tool because I have access to it. So I'm just gonna launch the snap tool from the full script pack here. And I wanna snap to the stairs because the stairs aren't the ones with the gap in them. So I'm gonna load that guy and turn the snap radius off so it's just infinite, so it just works. And then I'm gonna select all of these vertices Grab these guys here and we will go and we'll look for the gaps here. Sure. And uh, whatever, click snap verts. Boom, there. Hard to see, but they all snapped up. That's what the point of the tool is. So if you've purchased this tool from the store, then you can save even more time or you can go in and just do it manually. Like I said, sometimes a Boolean is good. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes this is actually more effective, but it's just a little secret trick that you should know about with the multi-cut tool. Here's actually a better demonstration of that tool. Snap verts. Boom, there we go, done. Okay, and finally, we've got the how to extrude and clone with the built-in hotkey. This is a super useful feature. I use this all the time. I love this feature. So go into the move tool options or any of the tool options by double clicking here, open up the tool settings, and then go down to smart duplicate settings. And you want to turn this on and this on shift drag and shift duplicate. I like copy, but if you want to make instances, that's cool too. Turn that guy on. Once that's turned on, all you have to do to duplicate an object is hold shift down and drag along an axis. So you can see when I hold shift and I go over any one of these things, it turns into clone. So just shift drag to clone objects. Similar to Unreal, but way better because in Unreal, you have to release the alt button or whatever it is every time you make a copy. In this one, you don't. You hold shift and you drag. Look at this. Drag, 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 drag. So way better. Feels a lot better than using it in Unreal. Same functionality, better implementation. Along with that, we have the 3D Studio Max style extrude. So select a face, for example, hold shift and drag to extrude. Continual hold shift and just drag to uh, extrude. Do whatever you want. Grab this face, extrude. Grab this face, extrude. Grab a vert, I think even. Extrude. 
Yeah, so super cool. Edge, whatever, anything you want. Super powerful. I like this as well because you can do stuff like this. Oh, I don't know why my pivot went down there. That was kind of trippy. And then just kind of model your stuff out that way. And I think it works with scale as well. So if you're extruding here, if you switch to the scale tool and then hold shift and scale along yellow, yeah, it'll go in, which is helpful. And then, you know, shift up like that. Do that, whatever. Now, one thing to watch out, though, with the shift extrude, though, is it has a bug or a lack of a feature. But basically, extruding non-uniform faces using scale does not work the way that it should. It does not work how you would like it to work. And I'll show you what that means. So select a face here. I've got a rectangle shape. Select a face. Hold shift. Drag along yellow. And you'll see what happens. Oh, what's going on here? See how skinny this is and how fat that is? That is not what you want. You want it to evenly extrude. And that's because it's just scaling and scaling for whatever reason doesn't work in Maya. And so when you want to do a shape like that and have it be even width on all sides, you still have to use the old method, which is select the face. I'm just going to hold shift right click here to enter the extrude face. So you put the extrude modifier basically on it. And then you want to use offset. And what offset does is look at that. It gives you a nice, perfect, even width all the way around. Whereas if I hold shift and drag, see, I get this crappy, uneven extrusion. So it's pretty cool. And I'll use it to do these types of extrusions. But uh, when it comes to kind of scaling stuff in, I'll still just quickly go extrude face and just move the offset slider. And then I'll go right back to shift. So cool, but just has that little limitation in it still. Thank you very much for watching this video. Without viewers like you, this channel would not exist. If you liked this video and enjoy the channel, please support me by purchasing something from the online store. Each purchase goes towards creating more video content and keeps the channel ad free. See you next time. Have an awesome day.